Hey y'all, it's me. Um, okay, so I didn't expect to make a video so soon. Um, but I felt like this was really important. So, here I am. This morning, I had a dream. I know it's a funny dream because it was at like some type of resort somewhere. I don't know where exactly I was, but it was a bunch of kids around and some people that I know from school. And there was a lot going on, and we was going through the, all these different stations and places and learning stuff. Um, but basically, what really stuck out to me the most, and this is the last thing I really, really do remember in my dream, was it was an old man. And it was an old man, myself, and a few other kids. But I do remember before then, my cousin was talking about waiting for the 15 bus to go home, and I was like, no, I don't want to do that. Um... But somehow, some way, I ended up with this old man and some children, and he took us to this, um, like this hole. It was like a hole, and it had some steps in it, but it was a hole. Nobody went down there, and he was like, yeah, um, it was a bombing in Philadelphia, and this was Osama Bin Laden's home, and a kid came out of it. It was a little boy. He made it out, and we don't know what happened. So... For some reason, I woke up and I was like, what the hell are they talking about? So I'm like, oh, maybe they did find Osama Bin Laden in a hole in, Pens in Philly or something. So I was like, okay, let me Google it. Turns out that, in fact, it was something else that I didn't, I was like, wow. Um, okay, so I, this is what I did when I woke up. I put bomb in Philadelphia, right? And then the bomb in Philadelphia, it had, like, you know, like, when you search something and then, like, something else is under it and, you know, like, another search. So it says 1985. So I I clicked the link. Well, I, I looked it up. I clicked the link. And it took me to this website called Global Grind. And it was, like, 11 things you didn't know about the time police bombed an American neighborhood. And then the article goes to state, on May 13th, 1985, a bomb was dropped on a row house in Philadelphia. Oh, and I, I don't know if I told you guys this. In the dream, right, where we were at, it was a row of houses. It was like, like, kind of like brownstones, but not, but it was a row of houses. And in the middle of these rows of houses, it was one house in particular, there was this hole. Okay? This is why I'm so creeped out. Like, I'm, I, oh my God. But I'm going to continue to read this to you guys. So on May 13, 1985, a bomb was dropped on a row house in Philadelphia, unleashing a relentless, a relentless fire that eventually burned down 61 houses, killed 11 people, including five children, and injured dozens. The fire department stood by idly. The Philadelphia Police Department did the same. The fire raged on, swallowing up home after home until more than 200 were without shelter in an entire community distrustful of the indi individuals responsible for the blaze, the police. It is a shameful part of recent American history that somehow been buried under 28 years and other destructions that have fallen on the city of Philadelphia. But in the wake of Birdie Africa's death this week, the only child to survive the bombing, Global Grind decided to take a trip back in time to explore what happened the day American bombed America bombed its own people. And, like, let me show y'all. There's a picture. Before I get into any more details, here's a picture. I don't know if you guys can see it on my phone. I don't know if it's clear enough. But that is the picture. Okay? Please pay attention to this picture. It says, The MOVE organization is a Philadelphia-based black liberation group that preached revolution and advocated a return-to-nature lifestyle. They lived communally and vowed to lead a life uninterrupted by the government, police, and technology. They were passionate supporters of American rights and members adopted vegan diets. Members also adopted the surname Africa. Oftentimes, they would engage in public demonstrations related to issues they deemed important. Okay, so, mind you, I've never ever heard of this incident. I've never learned about it in any textbook. I just literally just had a dream with a man telling me Osama Bin Laden was here and it was bombed and a little boy got away. I have no idea. So like just to read this article I'm sitting here like yo what the fuck? 
it, it's crazy to me. But let me continue. Okay. Move did, however, have a past with the police. Since inception in 1972, the group was looked at as a threat to the Philadelphia Police Department. In 1978, police raided their Powelton Village home, and as a result, one police officer died after being shot in the head. Nine MOVE members were arrested, charged with third-degree murder, and sent to prison. They argued that the police officer was shot in the back of his head on his way into the home, challenging the claim that he was shot by members inside the house. Eventually, the group relocated to the infamous house on 6221 Osage Street. There are differing reports about the group and how troublesome they actually were. According to AP, neighbors complained about their house on Osage, which was barricaded with plywood and allegedly contained a multitude of weapons. It had been said that the group built a giant wooden bunker on the roof and used a bullhorn to, quote, scream obscenities at all hours of the night, end quote, which angered those living in the nearby row houses. Eventually, they turned to city officials for help, which put into motion the events of May 13, 1985. So, as usual, whenever there's a black revolutionary group, or a black liberation group, there's always some type of bullshit behind it, where there's reports where they were all so dangerous, or, you know, doing this and doing that. Honestly, the fact that there's a lot of discrepancies in the story, it screams volumes to me. You understand? Like, the fact that they even said there are differing reports about the group and how troublesome they actually were. You want to know why they were so-called tr troublesome? Because... Let's be real. White supremacy is afraid of black unity. Okay? So, these people wanted nothing to do with the police, the government, technology. They were vegans. They cared about animal rights. And they defended themselves. They were armed, just like the Black Panthers were armed. So, what's the issue? But let me continue. Okay. Okay. On that day, armed police, the fire department, and city officials gathered at the house in an attempt to clear it out and arrest MOVE members who had been indicted for crimes like parole, parole violation and illegal possession of firearms. When police tossed tear gas canisters into the home, MOVE members fired back, which I don't blame them. It's your house. What the fuck are you throwing tear gas in their homes for? But whatever. In turn, the police discharged their guns. Eventually... A police helicopter flew over the home and dropped two bombs on the row house. So for this one row house, you really needed to drop two bombs? Two? Hell, you don't even need to drop no goddamn fucking bombs. That was unnecessary. But whatever, let me continue. Um, a ferocious blaze ensued. Witness and MOVE members say that when members started to run out of the burning structure to escape a fiery death, police continued to fire their weapons. That's what pisses me off. That pissed me off even more because I was just through with the whole bombs and the tear gas. I was pissed at tear gas, but whatever. The fire department delayed putting out the flames. After the blaze, they claimed they didn't, even, they didn't want to put their men in harm's way as MOVE members were still firing their guns. But MOVE members and witnesses say the weight was deliberate, which I do believe. Because if you were worried about your men being in harm's way, you would have never dropped two bombs on a goddamn row house. It was never that deep. In the end, 11 people, including MOVE's founder, John Africa, were dead. Five children died in the home. So... There's only one child survivor. See picture below. I'm going to show you him. That is the one person that was left. The only survivor. Remember, in my dream, they said during the bombing, only one person got away. And it was a, a little boy. Okay? His name is Birdie Africa. But it was later changed to Michael Ward. He ran out of the burning house naked and covered in flames. He survived his third-degree burns and went on to live a normal life, although he was forever with the lifelong burns and scars on his abdomen, arms, and face. Now, listen to this. This is the part that I just don't understand. 
Michael Ward was found dead on February September 20 ugh, Friday, September 20th, 2013 in the jacuzzi aboard a cruise ship in the Caribbean. He was on vacation with his family and initial autopsy reports say he drowned. In the end, no one from the city government was charged criminally. Doesn't that sound so fucking familiar? See, now this is where I have a lot of questions. And there's, I feel like there's a reason why I had this dream and I was told this information in the dream. Because I'm just a natural learner. I'm just going to look up anything to try to piece together what I need to know. So I feel like right now is my responsibility to take on trying to figure out what happened to, like, what happened. Like, why doesn't people know about this bombing? Why? It's such a big thing. How does people, like, I, I wrote it on Twitter, and my homeboy Aaron from, from Twitter, whatever, he lives in Philly. He said he lives seven minutes away, and people don't really know about this. Which is amazing to me because this is huge. And then on top of that, I need to figure out how the hell do you, a grown man, drown in a jacuzzi? Something's not right. And I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I'm going to continue researching. I've been researching all day. My mind has been crazy. And shout out to my homie Aaron in the Bronx. Who also gave me this beautiful bucket hat that I just love. I have another one that he got me. But I'm wearing this one today. And he told me I might as well just document it and make it a vlog. And you know what? I am. Because something needs to be done. Something needs to be figured out. And the truth needs to come out. Because this is really huge. Really huge. And just to figure all this stuff out from a simple dream that I had. I ha There's a reason why I was told this. And I'm going to figure out why. Because if nobody else is looking this up and nobody else is trying to figure it out, then that's what I'm here for. I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to find out what the fuck happened. So please stay tuned. Whatever new information I gather, because I'm really about to like get this cracking. But whatever, you know, information I do find, I will definitely be having my videos and I will have pictures and everything so you guys could... Continue on this journey with me because things don't happen for no reason. There's a reason why I had this dream and I'm going to figure it, figure out what the fuck happened. So please stay tuned. This is just day one of me figuring this out because this is just so amazing to me. Oh my God. And I love history. I'm a history bluff. So it just, and it's black history. Hell yeah. And it's mystery anyway. Yeah. So, guys, and if you guys find out any information, any other information, please let me know. And just inbox me on any social network that you have me on. And I would greatly appreciate it because I'm really, really going to get to the bottom of it. So, peace and blessings, guys. Thank you for tuning in. And I will see you guys soon. Mwah.